Thank you for tuning in to Restoring Your Life, an outreach of Life Application Ministries in Mount Ockham, California. Hi, this is Linda Lang. I'm going to be taking us on a journey through teachings, insights, and practical application for healing and restoration. Now buckle your seatbelt, hang on, and enjoy the ride as we continue Restoring Your Life. Welcome to another broadcast of Restoring Your Life. Well, today I'm going to be sitting with you from my backyard. You might see a few birds buzzing around my head. Uh, They're hummingbirds, of course, and they're going to make a little noise, but let's just enjoy them because God created them. We've got one uh, out here we call Wizard because his wings go vzz, vzz, vzz. Uh, Another one is Showtime. He goes bing! So there's a lot of different names we've called these birds, and they're our little friends. And so uh, enjoy them as I'm sharing with you what the Lord has laid upon my heart today. Well, Father, we thank you for an opportunity now to just listen to your holy word. Father, use my mouth as a vessel to speak the truth in love, to allow the hearers to receive what they need to become free. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I'm going to be talking about something right now about our hearing and there's a scripture that says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so many times, you know, we have uh, faith and we think that we read a bunch of books or listen to a bunch of or watch a bunch of programs and so forth. But we're also listening. But when you watch something and listen, you miss a lot. But if you close your eyes and listen to the words of a movie or a show, you're going to get a whole lot more out of it because your eyes actually speak as well. It starts to form opinions in your brain by what you see. So what happens is that it can mess up with our interpretation of what we hear. So sometimes I just want to listen. And and this is what God's showing me recently because I did not do really well in the listening department. And we're going to talk about it from Proverbs. It says that um, a person who is wise listens is a hearer, listens to the whole matter before making a decision. Well, sometimes we get in a mess. Sometimes we don't do that, do we? Sometimes we'll say stuff that we wish we never said and how do we fix it? And oh no, I'm never gonna go back to that church again because I made a fool out of myself. Well, I hope that this message is gonna help you because we've got to stop running. You know, I've ran away from so many things you know something will happen in that church and that will happen in the other church and then I'll leave that church and then this happened in that church I have to tell you that I'm one of those bouncy church goers uh, if you know what I mean maybe you don't even go to church anymore because of all the bouncing and there's nothing left and uh, this is not to bring condemnation this is to show me where I'm at and if you bear witness to it cool if it, you don't then it's for somebody else but I know that I, I look in the mirror and I go, you know, I'm good. I'm good with how my choices I made as far as the church and stuff. But you know what the truth is? Uh, there's a reason why I kept bouncing. That's what God wants to get at. He wants to find out why I am not sticking. And this is what he showed me just recently. It's because when somebody wounds you or doesn't value you or you don't aren't used the way you want to be used properly we tend to get offended. And we don't even know that's what it is. We just figure, well, it's just time to move on. No, something a little deeper happened. And I'm gonna talk to you about that today. And I'm gonna share with you how the Lord finally had me stop running from those situations. Because I just had an opportunity just this weekend to do that. And and I wanna share that with you because I think it's gonna help some of you with that. But first, let's get to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter one, okay? Read along with me. Proverbs chapter 1, and I'm going to read a few of the verses, and I'm going to focus on one particular verse. It says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. It goes into verse 2. To know wisdom and understand, excuse me, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. All right, that's nice. We can know all these things, receive all these things, and give all these things. What it says, to know wisdom, 
to receive instruction, to give. So there's three things that we are going to do. How do we do those things? And this is where verse 5 comes along. Now, the Bible is its own dictionary. It actually describes to you what you are to do. It'll give you uh, instruction and then tell you how to do it. If we would read the whole word, we might find out a few things for ourselves. And here's one of those instances. It says, a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall obtain to wise counsels to understand a proverb and the interpretation the words of the wise and their dark sayings all right i want to stop there and we're going to get into a little bit more proverbs in a moment but the answer is this a wise man will hear all right now there's a lot of wisdom in the world but that's not what we're talking about we're not talking about how much stuff you know because even paul says i know nothing i mean he was a scholar and i don't want to know have anybody think that i know anything i know nothing but christ and him crucified so how are we going to apply this to our lives how are we going to be a wise person and i just read it a wise man will hear you know it says in proverbs that a person who doesn't speak a lot is even deemed as wise because they don't say a lot to get themselves into trouble i for one get myself into trouble i get myself into trouble matter of fact i got myself into trouble this weekend uh because of my many words the bible even talks about many words will cause sin i, I you know i think this is going to be helpful to somebody here i know that's helpful to me is a wise man will hear and again i said earlier faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Why is there two hearings there? Well, the first hearing is when you listen to people speak and share their testimony and they start to proclaim the glory and the goodness of God. You're hearing uh, yourself even grow in faith. You can actually ex feel better like, wow, man, if, if that can happen for them, then it can happen for me. So that's the first hearing. You're going to hear what other people are speaking. And then it says, hearing by the word of god then also hearing the word of god do you know that that scripture actually reflects uh revelation 12 11 where it says we shall overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony right it's the same thing here the blood of the lamb is hearing by the word of god and the first hearing is our testimony so that works hand in hand you see it working together and so when i started to hear if you hear, you ain't talking. <laughs> if you're listening, you're not speaking. You're listening. You know how many people you talk to and, and you say something to them, but they're just on the, on the end of their chair trying to get into what they want to say. They didn't even hear a word you said. You know, I've had conversations where, I've even tested this out, where somebody's just telling me something and then we interject back and forth and I'll say something. I mean, it's pretty profound. And they continue talking from right where they left off, like I never said a word, and they keep going. I just kind of say, well, okay, Lord, <laughs> you know, listen, just hear them out. You know, that's why I hear them out, people, hear them out. You know, the, uh, here recently, I didn't hear somebody out. I actually didn't want to listen to the whole thing. I didn't realize I wasn't doing the word. The word says to listen to the whole matter. And what happened was that I had received an email from somebody, and it was pretty lengthy, and it was starting out pretty much accusatory you know almost accusatory and I you know what I don't even want to read this you ever done that I don't even want to read this so you just throw it in the garbage but the funny thing is is if I would have read it all the way to the bottom I never would have got myself into a pickle because I started responding out of that initial uh, accusation you might say or that offense that I received from my heart I didn't listen to the whole matter have you ever done that have you just cut people off? You know, I'm not listening to them no more. And, and you don't give them a chance to explain nothing. we got to stop and give them a chance to explain. We do. We need to stop and say, okay, what is on your heart? What are you really trying to tell me? See, misunderstandings come from not hearing, not listening. All right? So, uh, so what do we do about it? Let's say that happens to you and it happened to me. What did I do about it? We're supposed to stay in peace with, with each other, especially the household of faith. And this particular incident was done in the church. <laughs> so, um, again, you know, I, I feel like I, I made a fool out of myself. And here I am in ministry and, and I felt like a little kid, you know, I'm getting a spanking or something and um, being chastised. And 
I mean, it, nothing, none of that was happening, but that's kind of where my mind was going. You know, how, how can I even be used? I'm a horrible person. And why is anybody listening to me? And I was going on and on in my, in my heart, realizing that it was an accusing spirit lying to me and telling me that I had no worth and value anymore because I kind of stepped out and said a couple of things that I should have not said. And they weren't bad things. They were just out of line. They were just out of step. And they were premature, I'll put it that way, as to what was really happening. I didn't hear out the whole matter. And so um, I started feeling like I don't even want to go to church now. I don't want to be involved with that activity now. I don't, you know, I was going there and I, that's where I always would go in the past. Uh, I would, you know, be at this church and this and that happen and then I just won't do it no more. You know, I don't have to stay here and take that, you know, and that's what we do. And, and some of it's justified, some of it, you know, it's time to move on. Some of it's really God moving you on, but other times it's just from our own wounds. Yeah, we don't want to be abused again and hurt again and, and defiled again and messed with again and it's exhausting and it's too stressful. All right, well, the Lord says to walk peaceably with all men, forgiving everyone daily. And our love for one another shows that we love God. Now, is jumping from church to church loving one another? I don't think so. I think it's with something we need to go to God and say, okay, I'm done. I'm stopping. This is where I'm landing. This is where I'm going to plant my feet. That's kind of where I'm at right now because this morning was church. Now, the time of this airing is probably not Sunday, but this morning was church and I went and I sat next to the lady, actually, that I was having a conflict with because we don't have it anymore. Do you know why? Because that morning, which was yesterday, I went into my garden because I heard the Lord say, just come walk with me in the garden. So I didn't read a Bible or anything. I just got my little slippers on. I'm still in my jammies and I walked down and I start watering my flowers and he began to speak to me. And I can't even tell you what he said. You just kind of am knowing that he's working all things out for good. And, you know, because I was worried that there would be residue and, and I, would be, I would be, you know, seen as a troublemaker or whatever it is that you think you're doing when it's really blown out of proportion because that's not at all what happened. But that's what we think because the enemy wants to separate us and, and cause us to leave and go away and, and do other things. And so I was concerned then, worried, concerned is the same word, that the individual that kind of got in the middle of it wouldn't want to talk to me no more. You know, I mean, we go into these places and I thought, okay, fine, I don't want anything to do with them anymore, yeah, you know? And so I thought, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call the lady. And I did. I said, hey, can we talk? Yes, we talked. And it was like, all that was in my head. <laughs> all that back and forth and yeah, yeah. All that accusing was in my head because we talked like none of that ever happened. What I'm trying to say is that the enemy wants to separate us. He wants to use anything he can to put a wedge between you and someone else. And if he can cause you to feel bad and leave, He's done his job. How many jobs has he completed in your life? Because we didn't choose to stand and say, you know what, I'm gonna make this right. I'm gonna go to the individual that I need to talk to and let's make this right. Let's talk about it. Let's see, you know, let me, let me ask for forgiveness if I said or did something wrong. And so that's kind of where we need to be. As a matter of fact, I was reading in Psalm today and I wanna go there real quickly. It says, Lord my God, this is Psalm 7, 1 through 3. Lord my God, in you do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Well, let me stop right there. I wasn't being persecuted by nobody but myself. <laughs> I was persecuting myself. Save me from me. <laughs> and then, lest it tear my soul like a lion and rending it into pieces. See, don't feel good. It does not feel good to be... Um, to, to be in that position, to feel like you're not being, you know, used right or, or you're, you know, you did something wrong, said something wrong. It, it's painful, doesn't it? It makes you never want to even go back. It kind of causes embarrassment and shame. So this is what we want to get rid of. We want to be able to endure these issues and still get to the other side without guilt and shame. Isn't that lovely? Okay. Oh, Lord, my God. Here's the question that I had for the Lord yesterday morning. If I have done this, if there be any iniquity in my hands, and I rewarded evil to him that was at peace with me, yea, I have delivered him that 
without cause is my enemy. Let the enemy persecute my soul and take it. Okay, well, I stopped there and I said, Lord, let the enemy persecute my soul, but have mercy on me. <laughs> so it's not that the enemy is going to do that. This is in uh, the Old Testament because the Lord and his power and, and the mercy of Jesus Christ uh, by his shed blood on the cross covered us of our sins so that we can walk in righteousness. Back in the old times, they didn't have that. They had to go by works. We have the righteousness of Christ in us to cover our sins when we make a mistake. So it's not that the enemy is going to persecute my soul. It's that the Lord's going to teach me the truth so that I can make better decisions. And he's going to give me the empowerment to do that where I don't have to feel guilt and shame about it. So um, I really like this. It says, if I have regarded evil, excuse me, if I have rewarded evil to him that was at peace with me. So what happened was that in this particular situation I was going through, I basically told this there's three of us the third party that's not even really in the middle of it just me and the other lady and I told her I said you know I think I don't want to do this no more I want to work with that lady <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to work with that lady and um, the truth is is I responded erroneously I responded with offense I responded with not having the whole matter heard out I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling on myself here. I'm trying to help somebody that feels like they're stuck. They can't go back to that church because of how they left it. Well, it's more on you than it is on anybody else, unless it's in fact for sure a parting of the ways. Sometimes we just leave because of our own heart condition. So we have to look at it a little differently and say, Lord, if I have rewarded evil to those that are at peace with me so we have to ask ourselves am i the one you know i had to almost sheepishly say lord i'm the one that stirred everything up not that other lady not the one that i was sharing my heart with i was stirring this stuff up because of my own insecurities, because of my own loss of identity, because the enemy was telling me, see, you did something wrong. Who's going to ever listen to you, want to be with you, want to be around you? So I was praying. I said, Lord, you know, I trust you. He says, in you do I put my trust. Save me from all those that persecute me. And my own persecuting myself with those accusations of being unworthy and, and not being able to... Um, be the person I need to be and boy I've been a Christian 38 years and I'm still like this you know all those things that come at you and wh who would listen to me and all all those lies and I'm pretty sure some of you have heard the same thing like um, you know you go to do a job and you know how can you do that job you can't do that job you have not enough wisdom to do that job you don't have enough education you don't know how to do any of that you know and that's the enemy causing you to to doubt who you are see we have the mind of Christ and if we have the mind of Christ we can do anything because if we have Christ's mind he can do anything so we can do anything you know this Holy Spirit it says that the Holy Spirit gives us unction to know all things you know we have the power to know all things we don't have to go to a fortune teller or read a horoscope or have our palms read we can go to the Holy Spirit who knows all things. You know, I was remembering something that happened recently. And I was thinking about it. Really, truly thinking about it. And let's say, and, and, I, and it happens over and over again. But I see it a little differently now in a better light of things. You know, God knows everything, right? The Holy Spirit helps him to know everything because he continually speaks to our Father in our heart you know what's going on and so he always knows God knows everything he knows everything before you even ask right that's what the Bible says so um, this day uh, a friend of mine I had been carrying these index cards around with me for like three or four days and I had thought of my girlfriend she's blind and she uses index cards for her brailing and I've been you know carrying them around and um, so finally I uh, I've got these for you, Lisa. You know, here they are. Here's these braille cards. Because you know what? I prayed for those. I just prayed for those. Now, she just prayed for those, but it's been in my heart for three or four days. See, God knows what she was going to need before she needed it and got me going in behalf of it three or four days ago to get them to her in the day she was going to ask. Now, isn't that amazing? If you think about it, there's so many times, for example, uh, there's this uh, lady at church and her husband is ailing 
and she needs help caring for him she can't leave him alone so when she goes and does errands she needs somebody to sit with him so uh she needed to go to the store but she couldn't she had to get some uh, medicine and she said lord i need to get some medicine and there's a knock on the door and there's this lady is there anything that you need today and she goes i sure do can you go pick up this medicine now the lady is like maybe 25 minutes from her she just didn't show up the lord had to already prepare her to answer this lady's prayer well before the lady even asked now isn't that cool because god knows what you have need of before you even ask so he's already preparing others to come in and be used of him doesn't that make now look at those other situations that you've had in your life where you know you might have said oh just make it a mention all of a sudden you know well so uh, i was walking in the garden again and, and i said lord you know i just need to know that you know it's all going to work out i said i didn't even really ask for a sign or anything i don't do that but i just said would you let it rain it's august would you let it rain within 10 minutes it was sprinkling okay the clouds had to have been forming already they had to be he already knew i was going to ask for rain a day before because it started clouding up the day before and stuff it didn't look like it was going to rain but it was really kind of cloudy and then the, the thunder started and it was just amazing it didn't rain a lot but it was just enough to tell me linda i'm listening i hear your needs i'm responding i'm helping you now i i you have been trusting me so i'm going to entrust my love to you you see i have blown away by the power and the presence of our god He's going to meet you in the middle of your making a fool out of yourself, um, saying things that aren't good. You know, I wrote something down in church today that I remember years ago, I, a friend of mine gave me this little plaque and it said, friends are those who, when you've made a mistake, don't think you've done a permanent job. So when we make a mistake around friends, we know that they're going to go oh, that's Linda or oh you know no big deal I understand I do that too you know so we're going to love on each other through our uh, you know forgiveness through our uh, believing that all things gonna work out through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that teaches and guides we, we just start believing those things the more we see these kinds of things take place the more we see that because the Bible says that you know, uh, the goodness of the Lord draws people to repentance. And God didn't beat me up and say, oh, yeah, you should have acted that way or you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't have. You know, we're shooting on ourselves. And that's not what God does. What he does is he loves us. He loves us in this uh, very um, long-suffering, patient way that he does it. And grace, gracefully, with lots and lots of mercies, just this big bucket of mercy that pours over my head every morning. Matter of fact, the Bible says His mercies are new every morning because we sure need a whole bucket of it every day. But again, if when we receive mercy, we also need to have mercy uh, for others. We, we receive it and then we can give it. We have to be proactive and we have to be conscious of it because we just don't automatically be merciful. I was remembering when... I was asking the Lord to cause me to be like him more. I want to be more like you every day. I, I don't want to respond out of icky stuff. I want to be able to respond kindly and compassionately. And I'm finding myself, I'm getting better at it. But when somebody pulled out in front of me one day, I wasn't kind and compassionate at all. And I go, okay, I've still got a long way to go, Lord, here. But thank you for your mercy. And then, of course, he gave an opportunity to let somebody else pull in on the next uh, turn. But, you know, I, I just want to get to the place where I'm not responding incorrectly. That my first response is with kindness. It's not with, oh, why did they do that again? Oh, you know, and then, and then we take 10, 10 seconds and we breathe and we go, oh, okay, I'm okay now. Let's just, you know, go, go on, you know. But my response, I want it to be good right off the bat. Well, I wanted to share a little bit of my heart with you today because I think that 
Relationships are the hardest thing to do on this planet. And the whole word of God is about relationships. How to love one another. And our love for one another will demonstrate on really how much we love God. And it shows us that we are his kids when we love one another. Well, let me pray for you. And um, I'm believing that it's going to really be a blessing to you as you apply what you are hearing from this message. So God, Father, I thank you, Lord, for your presence. I just sense you right now, how you have, uh, you know, pur purified my heart and cleansed my hands because of my repentance and my acknowledging of the truth that I had to confess before you that it could have been me all along causing the problem. So Lord, I ask you, Father, to be with each person out there that has experienced the same thing or even experiencing it now, that they would be able to stop right now and begin to put dig their feet in where they're at and make it right where they are at without running to and fro. I pray that you would give them a strength and a courage to do this, Father. Let them know that all their weaknesses and all that stuff that they think everybody knows, you've covered. You are covering. Father, I ask you to help them to hear the truth. Hear the truth. Help them to become more wise as they listen to the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. You've been watching Restoring Your Life with author, teacher, and minister Linda Lang. Restoring Your Life is the outreach of Life Application Ministries in Oakham, California. To contact or support this program, visit our website at restoringyourlife.tv or write Life Application Ministries, P.O. Box 165, Mount Oakham, California, 95656 or call 530-620-4641. Join us next time and continue restoring your life.